I say this. <laughs> The, the former Minister of Higher Education, who, who is a, a friend of mine, we had dinner once, and uh, his statement, which took us, uh, there's not many of us, by surprise, and he says, uh, being a, a, a matured and senior politician himself, he says, I'm not even prepared to enter universities where the arena of political motives and shenanigans are a lot fierce than the partisan politics. Imagine that. And this is coming the former minister himself. So now I pushed to him, I said, so what are you going to do about it? You know? So, so that's that. Uh, so what I'm saying is, we must, we must start at the educational realm rather than leave it to professional bodies, you know, uh, legal uh, councils and the like. Because at the university, if the students who are hearing what we are talking about couldn't even care less what are these people talking about, they didn't even know the, the damage that has been done to the country's resources or the debt that they are inheriting, for example, yeah, the, debt, yeah. the debt of their future uh, recurring income, then uh, we, don't have, we, we don't resonate. What we say is above their heads, isn't it? You mean from the secondary and the primary? And, and uh, okay. upbringing yeah. as well. And, and the parents. And, and we make them only a semester. Dr. Uh, Sabarina, that is a cop-out oh, excuse. That's a cop-out excuse. Because what? I'm sorry to be blunt. <laughs> <laughs> because to my mind, uh, being, being in the university, we have the best opportunity to engage these uh, young, uh, high potential minds. Right? Why? Because they are at the right age of discernment, intellectual discernment, which they may not get from the primary, what more secondary uh, school levels. And what? Don't talk about the, the kindergarten. Recently, to uh, a weekend ago, in this new, uh, in the Bumiputra Congress, I was asked to touch on on uh, this matter on ethics and, and, and uh, virtues and morality and they were proposal that we must start from kindergarten every problems of the world the kindergarten kids has to solve how can it be that's not fair whereas the people like you and me <laughs> are, uh, yes brush our hands off and live this life that we don't want others to scrutinize isn't it that's not fair so what I'm saying is simply this, at the higher education realm, especially students uh, in professional disciplines like accountancy, uh, law, we, we must take cognizance that we are not talking in vacuum. These are not thin, uh, we, we take all this concept from thin air. Yeah? Professional bodies like National Institute of Accountancy, National uh, uh, Bar Councils and the, and the like, we have bylaws, right? that so-called so -called make the membership adhere to a certain uh, standards of conduct. Now, how, how do we, from the supply end, from the university, ensure that our graduates, at the very least, know what this bylaw on conduct, proper conduct is? I doubt our students even over open up this bylaw on proper conduct of an accountant that are expected. Why? Because I'm saying the fault lies within us. We, as the professor, we as a teacher, we have not yet engaged those people active in the, in the commercial market, capital market, as well as uh, enterprises, to be of relevant to our teachings. Because by the time we finish our textbook, another scandal has come up in the real world. So this dichotomy of people like us, the academia, the professionals, and the practitioners, the gap is widening instead of coming together and converge so that these uh, ethics, values, and morality issues are dealt intellectually, professionally, and institutionally. And that's my, to, my, to my mind, uh, lies the answer. We must collaborate within these forces. Again, academia, where the sources of 
knowledge supposed to be, right? Through our researches and readings, readings not even not not just readings of the future challenges, but also reading of the classical texts of the past. Yeah, some say that the classical texts of the past are of no relevance. No, that's wrong. The Congress that I mentioned too last weekend. We re-emphasize that the great works that the past scholars still holds true. Yeah, I could one. Pendeta Zakba, perangai bergantung kepada diri sendiri. Whatever you have, or whatever you are, depends upon how you yourself view you. Yeah, your own. And in that, he he touches on ikhtisat or businesses, savings, and berusaha sendiri. You have to work hard for your own. Yet the current uh, scenario is everyone is waiting for brim from handouts, you know, and these are the youngsters, right? The fishermen are given three hundred ringgit without having to fish. So, when you start having that mindset of uh, some sense of entitlement, rather than you have to be you, you have to build your own. That sense, not just riches, but your character, isn't it? Uh, that is where I, I suppose is where our sacred duty is to ensure that our charges, the students, year one until year four, four eh, you have, are uh, properly guided. Bring them, bring them, guide them, or be with them in the real world. Uh, it doesn't matter what I think much because I'm not a scholar per se. Uh, but I agree with both of your. Uh, thesis that character building lies within an individual. Yet the society wants a quick fix uh, solution to have a societal change. <laughs> a society is made up of so many individuals. Yes. You can never get an overnight solution tomorrow if you don't start with the first individual. And who is the best to touch that individual? It's the women. Is the mothers, and I'm not saying mothers in the biological sense, mothers and women in the metaphorical educational sense. Nurturing. Whomever is nurturing these young minds with right values and be that person, that persona of the values that he or she is teaching these people, will be the mother hen for these ducklings, can? In that sense. So I'm I'm suggest I'm suggesting simply whomever is being uh, being uh, trusted to teach must have that maternal uh, quality of nurturing nurturing in that sense yeah you mentioned about religiosity yeah we we discussed that uh, in the congress uh, uh, workshop on on virtues ethics and morality. I mean, I I mentioned that religio uh, is a Latin word that means to bind. Uh, the question is to bind who with what for what purpose <laughs> in that sense, can? So we say we have to anchor it with re within religion, yeah. Religion as if in the belief system that either is a revealed religion or the societal belief system. The reason, the the reason, the, the rational faculty within people, and the experiences of the society, or even the, or even the people. So these three sources of uh, virtues, religion, uh, uh, reason, and and experience, could be harnessed to ensure that the proper ethical values are, are passed down. Yeah. And yet again, we must also do the pre and post test. We cannot just leave it <laughs> like that. Uh, most, I do not know whether in university now you have uh, classes on ethics, but most uh, university in this country do not have even a faculty on philosophy. 
none. Whereas ethics is an applied philosophy program. So if you do not have a proper uh, philosophical program to change the ethical conduct of the, these young minds who will graduate to become professionals and leaders, then you cannot blame them for being whom, who they are later, isn't it? So uh, I must suggest also that we must be mindful that Malaysia has a lot of riches. We have the best of all the world religions here. We have all the, all the uh, best practices of the civilizational studies here. Yeah? Europe doesn't have what we have. United States of America, they, they call themselves the melting pot, but they, they still have this white supremacy in their mindset. We don't. We don't have the Malay supremacy mindset. We are cherishing our Chinese civilizational uh, conduct that drives the, the private sector players to continue to do hard work. Have you ever seen Chinese uh, uh, people who are lazy? But you have a lot in other races, isn't it? Why? Because in, civili in the Chinese civilization, they don't have this idea of hell and heaven the way that other religions uh, say, because their life is mortal. They have a finite existence. Hence, they say, before we reach the end, we must be the best that we could. Yeah, that's why our Chinese colleagues, when they gamble, they gamble hard. When they, when they play, they play hard. Because to them, today is the, the one that matters, not tomorrow. Right? Hence, the, the sense of urgency in whatever they do. When they party, they party hard too, in that sense. Because they say, it's all for this here and now existence. So what drives that mindset? They are civilizational. Our Chinese Confucius and Lao Tzu uh, wisdom in that sense. And what about the Indian? With their classics, with their metaphysical uh, realm references, with, with their uh, dreams. They have the karma thing. They have the karma thing. And these are all, to my mind, you combine that with the Islam, religion of Islam, you combine that, that with our Malay Kingdom uh, ancestral wisdom, we can be one of the greatest uh, concentrated um, civilizational powers that ever could be. Problem is, none of us is asking or interacting with each other and learn. We remain silo where our corners are, isn't it? But where that can be broken? Is it not the university classes? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Indonesia, our neighbor, is, I think, uh, one of the uh, fast learner. You know, uh, I was just there last week, um, attending this uh, international conference on. Um, governance and Sustainability uh, hosted by uh, Bangka Belitung uh, University uh, but coordinated by our UITM here. Uh, there were attendees from uh, everywhere and I was asked to give a keynote on governance. When I shared with them my mind like I have shared with you, see they, they look at how we interpret the current phenomenon called corruption, called uh, governance, within a cultural landscape. Yeah? Cultural in the sense that wherever you come from, you are talking here in the land, or this, the, the land of Indonesia. And Indonesia, being Indonesia, they respect local talent and they ensure that the indigenous knowledge is preserved. What I'm saying is simply this. Any foreign ideas coming from elsewhere can't be transplanted just like that into Malay or Malaysian psyche. Because what comes with it are the baggages as well as the presumptions of that other propositions. Yeah? Indonesia take whatever the best ideas of the world but localize it within their cultural understanding. Yeah? And the way that they, like I said, they are the fast learner because the way that they transform 
the idea of uh, independence from corruption this is only a decade ago yeah their regime the oppressive regime of the past they transform that into look we are the one in charge meaning the the locality the indigenous